Art, many places in California and Oregon, and I suspect in not too many years you're not going to be able to use lead. This could be your answer to getting a fly that will sink very fast. By the way, because it's tungsten, it'll just cut right through the uh, uh, water and go right to the bottom even faster than a leaded fly. The next fly is a pattern I've been working on for a number of years and I'm finally satisfied that I've got a good imitation and that's the crane fly. Crane fly is a really misunderstood fly. There's a lot of crane flies everywhere there's trout. It's a still water insect yet it ends up in a lot of rivers and streams. Uh, not counting lakes too. But what excites anglers is the way a fish takes a crane fly. And a lot of it is the way it's fished and the pattern itself invokes a lot of movement. The way the crane flies lay their eggs is they dive bomb the stream. They lay out their abdomen and cruise along very close like a, a bombing run like an airplane and then back up in the air and they'll do that many times over and over again and the fish really attack the fly. So you know that you have a good imitation when fish just about take the rod out of your hand. Big fish and this fly has really worked for us. Wherever there's crane flies and the fish get on them, this pattern works. So much of this pattern though is how you fish it. And one of the ways I fish it is I cast it out and move it along the surface of the water and then recast it again. We'll talk a little bit about that as we tie the fly. First of all, we've got to have an extended body. Uh, it's from the midge family. It's a great big giant midge is what it is. It, uh, uh, it's, a, it's just an interesting fly, but what, what a lot of people don't realize is there's so much of the larva in the streams that our woolly buggers and some of our big nymphs really are what the fish are taking, the crane fly larva, and, that, and that's a real part of our fishing uh, uh, arsenal is to have nymphs that imitate the crane fly, but we kind of drop off when it comes to the dry. And one of the reasons it doesn't work all the time, but the time to, that you want to use this fly, and this is important, is usually later in the summer and the fall when you start getting thunderstorms it seems to excite them and they want to go and lay their eggs so that's to keep in mind uh, although by the way this fly can imitate a lot of other things uh, it could be stone flies there's, there's a whole bunch of things so don't think it's just a crane fly pattern the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use uh, a foam foam has been the best I've seen a lot of different crane fly imitations and foam works the best because of the way it floats. Now I've cut, uh, this is a, a four millimeter foam, very flexible as you can see it's got a kind of a grainy, it's not real slick. Uh, I'm really uh, quite particular on getting the right foam. This happens to be by Legus, this particular foam. Notice I have a reverse taper and that's because of the abdomen of the crane fly reverses itself. It's thick at the tail in fact, there really isn't a tail. It's, it's so small, and it's thin uh, towards the thorax. Now, by the way, uh, there are other uh, materials that you can use. You can use multicolored uh, foam that is already designed with color in it, like this, uh, or you can use uh, the, the standard uh, color, which is what I'm using right now. Okay, we're going to tie it in right here. Now I'm going to go about halfway down the shank. Now the hook that I'm using is a hopper style hook. It's a 200 series of the Tiemco. Uh, there's a lot of good hooks out there uh, that will work for this. At least a 2X with a pretty good wide bend will work the best. Uh, now notice that I, where I'm at on position on the hook I've tied it down. Now this uh, particular length, now I think you can see right here, I'm probably not going to use all of this, so I'm going to cut it down to about there. You just kind of have to experiment around to find out how far you can get away or how thin you want to make it. But are you ready? Here's what, what we're going to do, though. We're going to go around. The bobbin comes here. I flip it over with these three fingers to the other side. And what I'm doing is adding segmentation. Notice I have an orange thread. That orange thread really shows uh, the segmentation. There's something about orange. It's magical. Uh, Randall Kaufman found that out with his stimulator. Notice how much orange thread is in the stimulator and the orange thorax. 
Orange is just a great insect color, as is red. I, a lot of times I'll use red thread. And as you can see, I, uh, I've now formed uh, a thorax. And if you look at a crane fly, it's segmented just like this. Now we're going to come to the very end. And notice that I'm holding on to it. There we go. And we're going to back down. Going back down. Then you can come. Okay, I'm going to go around and make a wrap. I'm using orange thread because this will show some great segmentation. And I don't know what it is about orange, but orange is a great fish color. I know my friend Randall Coffin, when he designed the stimulator, he used both uh, orange thread and orange for the thorax. As you can see, it, it compresses down. And you give you an idea about how long this should be. Again, it's kind of up to you. Uh, but the, the crane fly does have a long, thin body with the reverse taper. And we're right. Oh, I'm, I'm looking pretty good. I'm probably going to do one more. And then we'll come back and kind of trim that out. Now, we're going to go back around. Now, watch how I'm doing this. I'm taking the bobbin, taking my fingers, handing it over to my other hand. This will take a little bit of practice, but boy, I'll tell you, once you get it down, it'll be quite fast. And you can do uh, extended mayflies this way, too. Uh, I tie a gray drake with foam that's quite nice, uh, doing the same technique. Now, what we, as we, we follow through, as you can see, we're going right back over the thread that we had wrapped when we went up the body, up the abdomen, and right now we're at back down to the hook shank. At this point, we're going to come back and we'll, uh, we'll trim that. Now we're going to put on the wing, and that's really the hallmark of this fly, and that is the wing. The wing is always moving. When this thing comes dive bombing uh, the water, this big wing is like a huge propeller. <laughs> And we need a material that will imitate that. And so we're going to go to a crystal flash type material. This is called Rainbow Thread. It's a Dan Bailey product out of Montana. You can also uh, use uh, Mirage, which is another material, which is uh, the Accent Mirage, which is very fine. Regular crystal flash will work OK on the large one. But as you go down to a smaller fly, you'll want the thinner material. And that's right in through here. Now, what's that's going to do? If the light's going to shine up through the water, and you're going to get this glow, which is what happens when the wings go back and forth and diffuse the light. Get this glow. And we're going to come right there and, and line it up with the, uh, with the tail. I say tail. There really isn't a tail. The end of the, of, of the uh, abdomen. We're going to tie it in. And we're going to cut this at a little bit of an angle, just like that. And you'll notice how this is on top, and it's spread out. Now we're going to go to a material which seems like in all big dry flies, and that's elk hair. It, uh, if you're coming out to the west, and if you don't have any elk hair flies, we're going to tell you to go back home, because elk hair is just so terrific at helping float a fly. And it's the right color of a wing. The wings are clear. When the light hits it, this tan color of elk hair seems to work the best. Now, dealing with elk hair. Something that I've dealt with all my life is hair, even though I have a lack of hair on my head. But I do know how to tie hair flies. And one of the things about, and it frustrates a lot of people, is you've got to prepare hair. First of all, you've got to have good hair. This is not bleached elk. It's natural elk. And what I'm looking for is just a few of the natural fibers. I don't want to have too many, because this is a pretty delicate fly. Uh, I know a friend of mine, when he first saw a crane fly, he'd just come back from Alaska. And he had, uh, he had clobbered one of them and said, man, I thought they had big mosquitoes in Alaska. And he said, I had no idea Wyoming had the giant of all mosquitoes. And of course, I had to laugh tell him that it was a crane fly. And I pulled out some of the crane fly imitations and when I was working on this pattern. And we had a day to beyond belief. And it, it took a while for him to understand that it wasn't a giant mosquito. OK, we're going to take this right here. And we're going to take our thumb. This is really important what we're going to do here. 
how many fibers, it's just going to take you a little practice to, to realize not to put too many on. Now, I'm pushing down with my thumb, and I'm going to grab it with my thread, and I'm just going to make a couple wraps. And then I'm going to go to my cement. I'm using a, a Loon a water-based head cement. Uh, they also make a flexible cement. Either one will work very well for this. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that these stubs get a little bath of cement. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to tie into that. And boy, we're going to make sure that this, this wing ne will never come out. See how it just gushes out of there? Look at that. So now we have the wing. Now it becomes, you know, there's nothing ever easy in life. And uh, uh, consequently, uh, this fly is not as easy as it may appear to, to be because of the next step. The next step requires uh, putting on legs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie them on, and we're going to tie on three of them. And we're going to make a little loop here, just like this. Now, I'm using a Spanflex. It's extra small, small, medium, large. Now, on this size fly, which is about a 10, I'm going to use a small. And smaller than that, extra small. And then for the bigger ones, I'm going to use medium. Never use large. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little loop like this. I'm going to tie one in, just like that. I have struggled and struggled to find a, how, a good way of putting these legs on. And I've come up with this idea, and I think this probably works about as good as any of them. Now, you want to make sure your loop is pretty good size, because when you cut it, we're going to cut it right there. That's going to be the length of your legs. The idea is to keep these out of the way of the dubbing that we've got to do. OK, we're ready. We're going to take another one, tie it in about halfway. Whoops. Get out of there with this little little creature here is want, wanting to uh, horn in on my legs here. Get back. That's the only bad thing about elk hair. It's kind of all over the place. Okay, we're going to tie that in. So it comes out about halfway. Okay, now we now surprisingly enough, this fly looks like all legs. Oh, I don't tell me I did that. Did I cut that? I did, but it's no problem. Just tie it back down. I want you to know, people out there, that we do make mistakes. We do cut our thread, and we do make all the thing. We just know how to correct it. OK, so now we come with the third one. And we're going to tie it in. And it's right towards you. I don't want to get too close to that eye. There we go. Now we're going to back up and go through these very carefully. And here comes the fun part coming up. Get rid of some of those strands of elk hair. All right. OK, now we've got this in, the legs in. We're going to pull them forward, just like that, and wrap. We're going to bring in some foam. Got a little foam right here. And I've cut it down to a point. Now, this is uh, the same foam as before. We're going to use a tan, but again, I like something visible. You could even use a yellow, anything you could see. But the tan is more realistic to what the insect is like. You want to tie that in, just a little edge of it. Now, at this point, the thread's back there. It's not been in our way as we tied our legs in. And now we're going to add uh, some dubbing. Now, I like to use uh, a pretty. Uh, uh, sparkly. You can see right here, it's an Antron blend. Um, again, the Arizona uh, Crystal Rabbit. I'm using kind of a creamish brown. Again, I want you to understand that the colors are all up to you. How you whatever colors you want to put. But the browns seem to work the, the best. Uh, a lot of times I'll use this color right here. A tan or a dark brown, usually, and even kind of a, a little slight orange uh, one works well too. Now we're going to pull up the legs, 
so it's kind of out of our way so we can wrap. That's set of legs number one. And this is where it drives you crazy. Can you imagine if you didn't have those looped over and try to go around each individual leg? It's bad enough with the loop. Up oh, there we go. I'm going to pull that loop two right through there. Ooh, we're looking good. One more, and we got it. Oh, I always feel better about, about this once I get to this point. All three loops are done. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take and cut the loops. There we go. And that, that foam uh, thorax is going to help us divide them. Boy, I'll tell you, I have struggled to try to find a good way to put these legs on. I've done I don't know how many fly tying seminars, and I asked anybody has a better idea. And then I was watching Mike Lawson tie his beetle, and he used thread legs, and he tied it this way. So I wish I could say I came up with this idea, but I borrowed it from my buddy Mike Lawson. Now we're going to tie that down, and there we go. Look at that. Lots of legs. Now we're going to trim this, and I, I, this is kind of important what I'm doing here because this keeps it from crowding the eye. See the eye right there? We don't want to crowd the eye. We want to put a little bit of red. Remember how I said red was good? We're going to take a little bit of red dubbing. You got it right here, a bright red, an antron. I'm just going to wrap a little of it on. Now, I don't know what this might imitate. Some people say, oh, well, it's blood coming out or anything like that. Red is just terrific. A red-bodied um, Turk's tarantula is one of our best flies on the Snake River. And I'm going to wrap just a little bit of red. It's sort of like a strike indicator. You can look out and see it. But, you know, you really don't need much of a strike indicator in this fly. When they take it, and that's something I want to talk to you about, the takes are spectacular. That's what makes tying this fly so fun because you know you have a shot of a trophy uh, brown trout, rainbow trout, whatever kind of trout. When they attack this, the only thing we all figure in fly fishing is that the crane fly must be the filet mignon or the lobster of all uh, insects. Now we're going to complete this fly by uh, go back to my old Thompson whip finish that I've had for over 50 years. And we're going to tie it off and take a look at this crane fly. Maybe you can come to the back here and just have it come out. Okay. I'm going to trim it. Okay, there you go. Now you see the whole picture. Now I'm going to kind of trim these. A lot of times I'll trim this front leg a little bit shorter, but don't worry about it. Actually, believe it or not, I've even tied them longer than that. And this fly is just a terrific fly. It looks much better on the water than it does uh, on a vise. It's a bit crazy, but I can guarantee you uh, it will work for you. It'll be a fun fly for you to tie. Oh, we got one more thing to do. Almost forgot. We got to trim this back here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it round. Now, if you've never took a very good look at a crane fly, and a lot of people just have trouble catching them, you'll understand how I designed this by looking uh, at an insect guide. One of the Peterson Guide to Insects is wonderful. You can drop into your bookstore and just open it up and look up crane flies and you'll see the design. And you'll see that this fly is, it's sort of almost a cartoon design of the original fly, but it works because it gives the impression of movement and general size and shape. Have fun with it.